Again, we're going to take a look at two uh, spreadsheets or sorry, uh, sheets or tabs together here. We're going to look at our, our wages and, and process production costs, uh, mostly, mostly in labor. And then we're going to show you a simplified labor calculator so you can do a rough calculation of what your, your labor might look like for the year. So let's start off with wages. Uh, you're going to pay, often you might have different levels of wages. So this is set up for three different wage levels. We've set them at $14, $16, and $18. Even though I don't think in British Columbia you can pay someone as little as $14 anymore. Uh, but this is universal, so it can be used anywhere. You can just change these numbers. And then there's three uh, additions you can make here. So this one is uh, Canadian Pension Plan and Employment Insurance, which is about 6.6%. Uh, here, if you have employees, you need to pay WorkSafe, BC, so that's about 2.5%. And then I have idle time at 5%, which means even if you think a task is going to take, you know, 60 minutes, it's going to take a little longer than that. So, and people just get distracted with things. So what it does, it just adds a little bit of extra uh, cost to your labor. And so hopefully people are very efficient. If you think a task is going to take three hours, they do it in three hours, and over time do it quicker. But once again, this is almost like a buffer. It just adds a little bit more to the labor to uh, account for um, uh, inefficiencies. In the next part here, there are a number of calculations that you can use to understand how long it takes to do a certain process. Now, some people really like this, and for other people, this doesn't matter. Um, I do this occasionally. I actually don't think it's that important myself because it's very hard to do accurately. So what you're trying to do is calculate how long it takes to do certain tasks and what the cost of that would be depending on the wage you're paying somebody. Now the reason I say people often don't do this accurately is they don't think about the prep time. So if you're going to do this, you need to start from scratch, which means you stand there, you hit your stopwatch, and then you go, what am I going to do? Okay, I am going to prep trays with soil. I'm going to time myself about how long it takes to do 60 trays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything ready. I'm going to sew 60 trays. I'm going to put everything away. And then I'm going to stop my stopwatch because that is what that task entails. So the way this breaks things down, it's, yeah, we've done, uh, let's just say it took 60 minutes for simplicity's sake. Uh, these are the different rates, and this is just one person doing it. And it gives you a sense of how much it costs per minute. So there's a cost per minute to, to think about. Now within 60 minutes, this person, each person could prep 60 trays. So, but your setup time was 10 minutes and your closure time was 10 minutes, which means you actually prepped those 60 trays in 40 minutes. So it takes you about 0.67 uh, minutes to, to prep a single tray. So by taking the 60 minutes into consideration, it takes you about 30, second, 30 cents to prep every tray. So this is something to keep in mind that every tray, just filling that tray with soil has a cost. So this is just one example, and then and this, uh, basically, if we look at you need to prep 160 trays a week, you're going to spend about 107 minutes doing that. So this is the sort of thing that can help you with scheduling. So I've done this for things like sewing trays, cleaning and sanitizing trays, harvesting and packing, uh, doing deliveries, and these numbers are very, these are definitely... Uh, rough estimates because there's so many little things you do when you're in, in production, especially at higher levels, that can pull you away from these tasks. But it's a good exercise to go through to understand all the things that do take place when you're in production. So it, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff, just clean up things like that. So this connects to our simplified labor calculator. Now this one, uh, I wouldn't say it's fully uh, accurate based on our, our crop planner, but it's pretty close because we need to consider that, you know, we're doing uh, markets throughout the year and the crop planner is adjusted for different markets throughout the season. Um, but let's take a look at, at, at a January. So Monday being a sowing day, we have one person coming in for six hours, one person for four hours, and one person for three hours. Maybe they're doing the same or maybe they're doing different tasks. On Tuesdays, it's harvest day, so this is what the numbers look like. Wednesday, there's not, uh, not a lot to be done, so it's just one person for five hours. Thursdays, just like Mondays, is another sowing day. And then Fridays, just like Tuesdays, is another harvest day. But this is a bigger harvest day, so it takes a little bit more time. Saturday, we're doing a farmer's market. And Sunday's another day where there's really just a few things to be done. So these numbers duplicate for each month within a year. 
Now, some of these months have um, farmer's markets in them. So in May, for example, uh, oh, the market's actually already in there. We had it earlier. Is it in for all of them? So we've got, yeah, so we've got those, those farmer's markets in there. But in May, sorry, we add the uh, Wednesday farmer's market. So our, our hours go from five to 11 hours because we're adding six hours for, for a market in there. So it's only a short market. It's a four hour market. So an hour of prep and an hour of takedown. So our, 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 our labor does change throughout the year. So we can use these numbers here to get a sense of what our labor is going to cost. And this is really, really, really important in terms of having accurate projections because labor is a major, major cost. So if we were to say, let's look at our Friday hours, and let's say, like, let's just see if we can get everyone in for seven hours on Friday. Uh, even at the low level, we'll change this one person to, to, uh, to seven hours, and that saves us $600 a year. So this is really important in terms of being able to, to budget. And my approach here is not to be cheap and always cut down on labor, because uh, sometimes it might be your own labor. You're like, you know, I want to work less, so I want to be more efficient. That's going to bring costs down and bring my return per hour up. Um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I set one of these wages to me. So I pay myself a wage as a, as a business owner. Um, you could just say, well, I take all the profits, but what I'm trying to do is build a model. And if I need to replace myself and still own the business, I need to know what that's going to cost. So I, I assign myself a wage and I assign myself the highest wage. Um, so uh, so it's 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 factored into there. So when I look at my costs of production and all my expenses and my revenue and I see what my profit is, that's profit that the company makes after I have been paid. And so that is pure profit for the company, not like, oh, I only made five hundred dollars this year. How is that possible? Well, no, you got paid to do that work and the business made five hundred dollars. So that's very important distinction to make. We'll look at that a little bit more. So this summary here is a simplified version of one I had on here. Uh, and I think it just allows you a quicker look at your monthly expenses for labor. Uh, your, um, it'll be a little more than this because there's some taxes you need to pay. Uh, and then your hours. And you can see these are pretty consistent. So it's just a model. It would be more varied uh, throughout a season. And so those are, are being considered here. So you're using these numbers to get a sense of, okay, well, if I have to clean 400 trays a week, when is that going to happen? How much time do I need to assign to that? And, and, uh, and how many people do I need to pay to do that? So that just helps you make those calculations. So we've got our wages and process uh, production costs to give you a sense of what different processes in the production uh, cycle look like. Then we've got a labor calculator. So we have a sense of how labor fluctuates throughout a year. And we can account for different wage levels as well as for uh, variations in markets and things like that. And between the two of those can get a fairly accurate projection of what our expenses are going to look like for labor throughout a season.